Welcome to episode 115 of our Family Travel Australia series. It's time to go fish. This week, Paul learns some great tips from expert anglers and catches and cooks a delicious fish dinner. We get spoiled with more 80 mile beach wildlife and have front row seats to watch pods of dolphins feeding along the coast before we travel 460 kilometres west to Point Sampson. We day trip to Dampier, home of the Pilbara Wanderer, aka Red Dog, and the world's longest train. And we are surprised at just how much there is on offer in this small coastal town. We visit the Woodside LNG plant for an interactive and educational insight into Western Australia's largest gas operation. And we marvel at the world's largest and oldest collection of indigenous rock art, believed to be 47,000 years old. Be sure to subscribe and join us for all of the adventure. mile beach and this is known as a fisherman's paradise one problem I'm not much of a fisherman I'm keen to be a fisherman though which is the main thing I absolutely love eating fish it is pretty well three nights a meal staple in our diet being pescatarians pesky pescatarians uh, that's veggies that eat seafood for those of you who wonder what I'm talking about what is great about this is that a couple of my neighbours, I've got Baz on one side and then across the road I've got Tomo who is literally a local here at 80 Mile Beach and Tomo in particular is a bit of a legend fisherman, he'd hate me to say that but the guy's got more stories, more tricks of the trade, more ideas on what to do, what not to do. He's probably made more mistakes than, uh, than a lot of people out there so he has really learnt from those and he's so willing to share <coughs> Do I just follow a <coughs> fly? Yeah, I'll slow mo that up for you. <coughs> Holy dooly. Pescatarian that also eats flies, apparently. <coughs> Holy crap. Excuse me. Okay, let's keep going. Whew. Tomo is willing to share his skill, and that is what I love about camping caravanning, RVing, anything to do with this community is always awesome. It's about people adding value. So I am about to get my first real lesson on beach fishing. We're hopefully gonna do a catch and cook segment out of this. The guy's a legend at filleting. He's got all of the ideas on how to cook them up as well. So let's see how we go. Wish me luck. 80 Mile Beach, Fishing 101 with Tomo, Baz and Paulie. Here we go. All right, Tomo, mate, thank you for taking me fishing. Yeah, Paul caught this one. <laughs> thank you, mate. It's a thread fin, he's got five whiskers. Yeah, they've got to be 450. So we've got two just on the 500 mark. So they're going to have it for tea tonight. It seems you're obviously pretty passionate looking at your setup. Oh. How, how many years you've been fishing? Oh, I don't know. You know, I've done it all my life since I was a kid. Okay. I used to go to Cherry Venture um, in this ad when I did. I, I lived in Yamundi for years okay. when I was a school kid. Yeah, yeah. That's right. But there's other places down more about it than I do. Yeah, I oh, know. Look, I'm, there's always experts, isn't there? But, mate, you're so free in sharing your knowledge. Thank you. Yeah, a couple of nice 
Oh, Bowser over here got one, so yeah, he didn't like so he's got enough for feed tonight. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> now, Buzz, mate, you're on day two of fishing. Day two. And look at you. Two for two. Unbelievable. <laughs> there is nothing better than fresh fish, especially when you're doing a bit of a catch and cook. I certainly didn't catch it. Tomo did, the expert, but he's uh, made a deal with me. As long as I cook it, he'll be happy. We're gonna basically do a bit of a, a classic fish and chips, but he's given me some ideas on how to actually prepare this fish. He's lent me his little mini deep fryer, which is great. We're gonna do the chips first. And with the fish, he said, look, really basic stuff. Just dip them in some milk once you've sliced up into some bite-sized chunks and then put in a bag whatever spices you want so in the cupboard we've got basically some salt some pepper some ground cayenne pepper just to add a little bit of spice to it and we're also going to put in some thyme and oregano we're going to mix it around and then with some self-raising flour chuck those chunks in once we've dipped them in the milk and then they're good to go. It really is that simple. We're gonna get the deep fryer on, go and get Baz and Tomo over here, grab a beverage, give it a go. I think this is gonna be delicious. 80 Mile Beach Fishing has totally sold me on becoming a fisherman. And Jasper did all right too today. We didn't catch anything, but gee, we had fun. Tomorrow is another day. I think our luck will change, here's hoping. And he wants some chips. Now when that's gonna be cooked, I'll just throw a few chips on top. Back in. You want to double hit in there. Amazing. Salt, the prawn was baited. <laughs> it was my <laughs> Well, there you go, eh? <laughs> well done, Tomo. <laughs> he, he said it was my fault. <laughs> Goodbye to 80 Mile Beach. Gee, that was good. What an incredibly beautiful place. Yeah, what was your favourite part, Jasper? My favourite part was actually getting to ride down on the beach and yeah. fish. Oh, yes. Yeah, we've got a budding little fisherman. Mm -hmm. Little Rex Hunt going on in the back there. Yeebity yeebita. Better buy a rod, babe. Got to buy a rod, <laughs> yes. And we'll be kissing fish before we know it. It was awesome. All of us learnt something. We were yes. talking about that this morning. Yeah. And again, that's only due to the fact that the caravanning community is so friendly and so giving. Mm -hmm. For us, that's generally our experience, isn't it? I know. It's just awesome. And doesn't it feel like we're leaving and Tomo and Baz, like we've known them? Oh. Yeah. There you go. Just... You get to catch that on camera. That was. Uh, a nice massive gust of, gust of wind that totally swayed the van and of course the uh, electronic stability kicked in straight away. My heart's going mate. Amazing. I'm alive. Well there you go, wasn't that interesting? <laughs> that was... That I haven't was had one of those since I think uh, down near Newcastle. It was the last time that I felt like that and then another time was in Tassie coming down off oh, Wellington Mountain. Yes. That gave me a fright yeah. there too. Okay, there you go. Continuing on. Yeah, anyway, as I was saying, Tomo and Baz feels like we've known them forever. Yeah, it's uh, it's awesome. You know, you've got Tomo who's really been around the block many times and uh, is an incredibly keen fisherman and, and obviously very good at it. Every day that we were out with him, he caught multiple fish. Oh, amazing. So, you know, so you have to think that when 
he's out and no one else is catching him and he is he's he's got the feel he's a fish whisperer <laughs> <laughs> yep. funny stuff um look the actual caravan park is fantastic the drive-in is okay mm. it, uh, you know just drive to the condition uh, we slowed right down on the way out it was actually it felt a little worse yeah more corrugated so yeah. we dropped down to almost 15 kilometers an hour mm. much better the only thing that's missing from that park is a pool yes well you can't yeah. swim in the ocean well you can but you do so at your own risk because there is plenty of sharks out there and we saw them and there was also some backpackers that were out there swimming that got yelled at by one of the uh, locals who said bull shark get out and I mean they're swimming like three meters off the shore now we only saw one shark um, and but there's apparently heaps yeah I tell you what we did film just you know we had the drone out we're getting some shots and the amount of dolphins having a feeding frenzy was amazing amazing and the footage just stunning like that everything is just thriving oh spectacular yeah. and the shells I could have just spent every day beach combing in fact I think I did yeah. beach comb every day but just beautiful just such a beautiful environment and at this time of year fairly quiet amazingly quiet very quiet you could easily spend a couple of months there um, I know Baz Barry <laughs> uh, is, there. yeah he's just extended more so he, he came for a week and he's now uh, up to five weeks <laughs> there you go look all in all we loved it it was a fantastic experience and so far my favorite place here on the WA um, coast so yep. yeah beautiful all right down the road now to South Headland which is just mm -hmm. south of Port Headland yep. uh, it's about 250 kilometers away and then another couple of hundred kilometers on if we're feeling good and the driving conditions it's fairly quiet we'll continue on down to Port Sampson so about a five five and a half hour drive day split in half we'll do a good grocery shop yeah 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 got to get lots of supplies pick up a few things from the van for the van as well Jasper will get back on the iPad which is the best thing about travel days isn't it mate yeah it's right over here if you can't see it yeah it's red it's ready to go as soon as I wrap yeah. up all right do you want to wrap up there it is, all right. See you soon, guys. Bye.
you feeling? Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. Why are you morning, Dad? Good morning, Good <laughs> morning. Thank you, Jasper. So it's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Hey? Okay, an absolutely picture perfect day. Mm -hmm. Where are we, Jasper? We are somewhere. That's a very good answer. <laughs> it's somewhere along the west coast of Australia. It's actually called Port Sampson. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you like about this park? That's true. Actually, yeah. there goes the groundskeeper now. You'll have to let him know that you you think he's doing a good job. Yeah. They've got a really great pool here as well, which we get to hop into, but we will hop Excuse in, me. bless you, a little bit later today. <laughs> what else they got here? Um, They got a kid's playground. Very good. I went on it. Yes, that was good fun, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, it's a pretty big park. It's very quiet at the moment. Mm, it's called the Cove. The Cove, that's yes, it. Yes, yeah, there's two choices here at Point Sampson. It remarkably looks like Tasmania when you look out to the it ocean. It does. Yes. Yeah, it's it, really beautiful. It looks the same. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's which is we, very strange to us, but I think it's because it is this landscape that is bare of infrastructure and mm. housing and buildings, so it's just this like untouched pristine coastline mm. which Tasmania has plenty of as well mm, might be calling us still yeah mm, I'd love to get back to Tassie mm. all right so we're going to do a little bit of exploring we're going to head out to Dampier which mm. is pretty well driving across even further west toward the coast yeah so via Caratha up mm -hmm. to Dampier on the point it's about 80 k's from where we are here yeah yeah uh, and it's more recently famously known because of Red Dog. Yes! Isn't that a great Aussie film? Ugh, great Aussie story. Yeah, okay, if you don't know about that really quick version, a dog who's unfortunately lost his uh, master in a motorbike accident and then spends like the next 20 years or something trying to find his master, John. Mm. The dog is reported to have been seen as far up as Darwin, down to Perth, it's believed he even hopped on a ship and went to Japan. Really? Yeah, <laughs> He's famous in the Pilbara. Truly is, mm -hmm. and everybody loved this dog. He became, I guess, everybody's dog, yeah. and that's that's yeah. what's so legendary about him. And then, sadly, uh, eventually was was found no longer of this earth at his owner's grave, his original owner's grave. Really? Yeah. Wow. So that's a really beautiful story. We might try and get that, shall we? Watch the yeah. movie, Jasper. Now that I've done a spoiler alert yeah. for you, <laughs> Jasper, we will check it out. But they've got a trail over there, a memorial statue and some other things for us to check out. Yeah, it'd be good just to get a lay of the land and mm. check it out. Caratha too. I mean, massive mining industry up here. So mm. we might be lucky and see some of those huge trains, Jasper. Very cool. We All right. already saw about... One? We did see one on the way in, didn't we? Yeah, one train that was like three kilometres long. Crazy. Yes. Amazing. All right, ready to go? Yep. All right, Bye. let's do it. Bye. Bye.
Wow. Have you ever seen anything like that? No. Me neither. That was one minute and We had such an awesome, unexpected mm. time in Dampier that we've decided to share with you some of the highlights of our trip there yesterday. We actually went to mainly see Red Dog. Yep. That really wonderful Dampier entry statement with the statue memorial to this very famous Aussie legend, the four-legged Kelpie, that completely engaged not only the community but a nation. Mm -hmm. And we got our selfies. Yeah. We read the story. <laughs> Uh, Jasper really got to climb up onto it and really enjoy that as well, which is great. In fact, we've hired the movie Red Dog mm -hmm. and we're going to try and project that onto the back of the caravan a little bit later and have an outdoor cinema. I think he's really going to love it. Now that he's been introduced to that story, I mm -hmm. think that's going to be a great experience. But then we took a drive down to the main foreshore of Dampier and it was like we'd driven into one of those North Queensland tropical seaside villages. Mm, yes. What a surprise. It really was a surprise and, and the beautification and redevelopment that they are undertaking on the foreshore is fantastic. There are huge green grassy lawn areas, palm trees swaying in the breeze or wind. <laughs> and one of the most incredible children's playgrounds I think we've seen anywhere. Look, it actually reminded us of a, a pretty impressive playground that we got to visit over in Emu Park, which is just on the coast in from Rockhampton. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a multi-million dollar kids playground. Mm -hmm. And for Jasper, I think this was the absolute highlight <laughs> of visiting Dampier. Yep. You mentioned the wind. We're at the end of October here and coming into November, or as the WA locals call it, Blovember. <laughs> yes, and I think we are about to experience some serious Blovember. There you go. <laughs> Cue wind. Yeah, look, the wind is definitely starting to pick up later in the afternoons, mm. and uh, to watch those palm trees, yeah, absolutely in the wind was pretty cool as well. Yep, so a really beautiful spot and great for families. Yeah, really great for families. Mm. Okay, when we arrived there, we actually caught up with with a fellow traveller who's travelling with his family, Aaron. We've been crisscrossing down the coast from Broome and he said, guys, there's a centre, the LNG Woodside Centre and gas plant is about to close mm. and today is the last day that you have an opportunity as public to go to the visitor centre and stand that close to one of the largest natural gas plants in the world. Mm. So we literally hightailed it back <laughs> 10 minutes down the road and what a fantastic experience this was. Yeah, look, I think this is more like a museum or an interactive gallery than a visitor centre. Mm -hmm. We were greeted by Kerry, one of the lovely staff members who was so welcoming considering we ran in a few minutes before they were due to close and she gave us such great information and really guided us on the best way for us to self-tour through the facility. Mm -hmm. That included watching a number of excellent educational videos that not only explained the process of how the gas was formed in mm -hmm. the first place, but then of course the engineering and the science behind how we actually extract that gas and what we need to do to it to turn it into a liquefied natural gas for transport. Yes. I mean, some amazing facts here, just a couple that blew my mind. To transport this natural gas around the world on ships, they have to liquefy it. Mm -hmm. And so in order to take this natural gas and make it a liquefied natural gas, they cool it to a minus 161 degrees Celsius. Incredible. And the equipment <laughs> that does this and the production line process really is fascinating. It truly is. In fact, when they load up one ship with this liquefied natural gas, if they were to leave it in its natural state, it would take 600 ships to transport. Just incredible. It is truly 
incredible. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that you're able just to get so close to the plant. Yeah. And they have these iPads that you can hold up to any part of the, the train, as they call it, and the plant, and press onto the screen and interact with it. Mm. So you can find out all of the details as much or as little as you like. Jasper had a go at it, so it was even interactive for mm. someone who's five. Yeah. Really wonderful. And then there were some other more friendly kid interactive screens as well that you could mm -hmm. touch and poke and find about the environment and the cultural history of the region as well. Mm. So very, very cool. And Kerry gave Jasper some takeaway gifts as well, which again, just her attention to him and mm. making him feel a part of the bigger picture and the story was really wonderful. So this is one to absolutely visit if you're coming to this area in high season. It mm -hmm. is closed during low season or as they refer to it, cyclone season. So make sure you get online and check the travel dates to uh, align with their opening hours. Mm, yeah, fantastic experience, mm -hmm. thoroughly enjoyed it. And quite a surprise to have something like this at a working facility. Yeah, that's it. Okay, just down the road, literally 10 minutes drive, is a very famous local hangout called Heeson's Cove. This is mainly famous because of being one of the only locations along the west coast that you can check out that staircase to the moon. It only happens between May and October, so unfortunately we missed the opportunity this time round. <laughs> but the actual beach itself is naturally landscaped and stunning. Oh, the drive in and then being met with a high tide and the colour of that mm. water against this sand that was so white and in abundance. The beach is very long and very large and you can actually drive down onto the beach to find the perfect spot. And they also have some sheltered picnic areas and barbecues there as well. So I can totally understand why it is a local's favourite hangout. Yeah, I think if they could make this a campsite, mm. it would be a hard place to get into. Yeah. <laughs> There's also other facilities there, showers and bathrooms. So a really great day trip experience. Yeah. Now, just a few kilometres up the road is probably the real highlight for our trip to Dampier. Mm. And that was the Murrajuga National Park. It's set on 5,000 hectares. It boasts the largest concentration of rock art or petroglyphs anywhere in the world. And they have opened it to the public and made it accessible. And we were blown away. Oh, this is awesome. And it is only a short 700 metre, very easy walk on a concreted path mm -hmm. that is completely accessible for all. So if you are on a mobility scooter or in a wheelchair, you mm -hmm. can get up close and witness these incredible artworks that are believed to be over 47,000 years old. Mm -hmm. There's great interpretation and signage. There's a midden with the shells right there so that you can see those as you walk past and also bush tucker stories and plants that you can read all about too. This is a very special place. Mm. They are, in fact, on the tentative list, we're told, for the World Heritage Listing uh, here in Australia. So I don't think it'll be too long before this will be making headlines around the world, not only for the cultural significance, the geology of the place. I mean, mm. this was formed 2.3 billion years ago. Amazing. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the red rocks have actually oxidized. If you split one of those rocks open, they're actually a blue gray marbly looking color, which is very similar wow. to what we found in the East and West McDonnell Ranges back in Alice Springs. So yeah, truly beautiful place. It looks mm. as though a giant has come along yes. and just dropped handfuls and piles of these rich red rocks along the landscape. It's mm -hmm. very unique. It is, and I loved everything about this. And a good tip is to visit in the afternoon when the sun is in the right position to shine back down on the rock faces and really brings the artwork to life. And once you see one, then, oh, there's another one yeah. and another one. And it, there are so many there. Yeah, and it was really great for Jasper too because he was finding ones in different levels that we yeah. hadn't seen yeah. so it's great location to take the kids as well okay for us then it was heading back 
to where we're staying here at Settlers Cove or Settlers Beach in a really tiny little seaside place called Cossack, a heritage village that mm -hmm. is so rich in history. And we can't wait to share that with you next week. <laughs> yes. But before we actually leave, we're gonna leave you with some footage of Red Dog's resting place. Yes, now this isn't widely known. And in fact, we have been told it's a bit of a local's secret, but Red Dog's final resting place is not too far from where we are staying here. And we took a little bit of a wander through the salt flats to see if we could find it. And it's a really beautiful mm. memorial again to Red Dog with a lovely plaque and some treasured belongings that I guess locals and visitors have left over time, some little tennis balls and treats. So it really shows again, what an impact this amazing dog had on the region. Mm -hmm. All right, for now, we'll say goodbye. Look after yourself and do look after your family. Happy trails. Thanks for watching. Please do like, subscribe and share our channel and if you'd like more information on full-time RV travel and living, visit our website, thefeelgoodfamily.com.au. There you'll find loads of free resources, our weekly podcast, caravan cooking recipes, our monthly Go RV magazine articles, and much more. We look forward to seeing you next week. Take care of yourself and your family, and happy trails. that simple. We're going to put the deep fryer on. Now we've never used a deep fryer before. A fryer? <laughs> <laughs> right oh, you two. Thanks for your support. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> so, yeah, hi, just looking for the cafe. Um, I think it's called Sharkies. would you like to stay in? Uh, can we please get a waterfront view? Uh, sure. Just head up to the main bar and...